Cops of Reddit, what is the most stupid criminal you have ever met? Old roommate was, is a cop. He came home to tell me an ATM was robbed, after hours, for $15,240. The next day the man who robbed the ATM deposited $15,240 into his personal account at the bank he robbed the night prior. I'm a 911 dispatcher, in Florida. Sometimes confused or drunk people knock on the wrong door or try to get into a house thinking it's theirs, but it isn't. It's an honest mistake, but the homeowner is rightfully very afraid thinking they are about to be robbed or worse. Well I had this kid, must have been in his early 20s and clearly stoned call me going absolutely crazy that someone is trying to kill him and take his property and rape his girlfriend blah blah blah. I send units code 3 to this guy thinking it's a burglary in progress. Turns out the guy ordered a pizza and forgot about it. Scared the delivery guy half to death. I knew a guy who got busted selling weed. He went to his hearing at the court, and went through the metal detector, with an Altoid tin full of ecstasy pills in his pocket. It set off the metal detector, sheriff's deputies searched him, found the pills, and arrested him on the spot. My mom's cousin was a bank robber. The time he got caught he went into a bank, scoped the place out, left to go back to his bike, this mf robbed banks on a fucking bike, he put the mask on, robbed the bank. Police see the tape, see that bank robber was wearing same exact clothes as guy who left less than a minute before. AAANNDDDD that was that. Edit, by bike I mean bicycle. Note to self, police won't catch me if I change clothes first. Note to self, police won't catch me if I change clothes first don't have clothes. My ex stole a car and went to pick up his friend at the police station in the stolen car. He parked right in front of a cop. The cop ran the plates and escorted him into the building. Next day, he was on the news as the most stupid criminal in town. Edit, a lot of people are asking me why I dated him. Well he never told me that. One day, I decided to google his name and I found the article. Learn from me ladies and gentlemen, google your partner's name. You never know what they are hiding. And yes, best thing I did was break up with him. Mistakes were made. Should have hit the pay and spray first. Took a vehicle burglary report where the victim found a driver's license sitting on her driver's seat that the suspect must have left behind. Seems damning, but if he had any criminal smarts he would just say his license was stolen and the thief must have dropped it while breaking into this new victim's vehicle. Without any other evidence, the case would have gone nowhere. The next day I take a report at a church that was a couple of blocks away from the vehicle burglary. This guy stole the video cameras from the building. He must have thought the footage came with the camera, because when we checked the video, there was a high-def close-up of the suspect's face as he removed the camera. Good evidence, sure, but I still didn't know who the guy was, until I looked at the license I collected the day prior and saw it was the same exact guy. Every day I see a big black SUV with sheriff written on the side parked in the driveway across the street, I don't know if the guy is the sheriff or works for the sheriff but one night I wake up to a dozen sirens outside. Turns out some idiot tried breaking into sheriff dude's house while he was home and his vehicle was right freaking there. There must be some good stuff in that house. I bet no one's tried to break into that house before because the sheriff's truck is parked outside and no one's as smart as me to realize that the sheriff lives at the police station and this is a trick to stop less smart people from breaking in. There must be some good stuff in that house because the sheriff's truck is parked outside. Story from a professor I had who was a retired police detective. Armed robbery at a dry cleaners in a bad part of town. When the robbery looked away, the cleaner's owner took the opportunity to grab the gun and disarm the robber. The robber turned and ran, misjudged and went through the glass door. Police arrived on scene and noted among the shards of broken glass on the cleaner's floor, a hunk of something flesh-colored. It turned out to be a piece of human ear. Detective retrieves the hunk of ear and goes to the county hospital's emergency room. Shortly after the detective arrives at the ER, a man who matches the robber's description walks in, holding a towel to the side of his head. Detective asks to look and sees that a hunk of the man's ear had been cut off. Detectives holds the piece of ear he retrieved from the crime scene, and sure enough it is a perfect fit. Detective places the man under arrest and waits while the ER doc sews the hunk back onto the arrestee's ear. Detective asked, why on earth did you decide to rob a dry cleaners of all places? Arresti replies, I've been watching that dry cleaners for a while. I'm sure they take in a lot of cash. I've noticed that there is an armored car there twice a day. 
Detective explains, yes, the armored car is there every morning to drop off employees' uniforms for dry cleaning, and returns every afternoon to pick them up after they've been cleaned. My dad is a cop, and I remember that he called me one night and said that he wanted to tell me how glad he was that I'm not as stupid as the guy he arrested that night. An idiot high schooler was caught stealing alcohol after his fake ID was rejected. His fake ID said he was born in 2001, three years younger than he actually was. Poor guy couldn't work out why his ID didn't work. My dad recommended that he pay better attention in math class. Make the number bigger. Can't go into too much detail, but kid 14, shot another kid, 15, in the leg after a fight in their apartment complex. The victim is able to describe the gun the shooter used in detail. We get get shooter's name from another kid who knows him from school, my partner looks up his Instagram and would you believe it, there he is posing with the gun described to us exactly. Social media is a treasure trove of wannabe gangsters incriminating themselves. Edit fixed my drunk ass words. Went to a job of two males attempting to break into a car. Job description said they had been at it for at least an hour. Got there and the car was theirs. They had apparently locked themselves out. Checks confirmed it did belong to one of the person's mom. On their person was stolen mail and heaps of phones and new stuff in boxes in the car so they got arrested for theft anyway. Ended up that the driver's door they had been trying to break into was the only locked door out of the four was unlocked everywhere else the whole time they were there. Edit, mail turned out to be junk mail and a wedding invitation. Teen gets fired from Red Lobster, returns to rob same restaurant that night. They refuse to give him money from register so he grabs charity coin box, muscular dystrophy or similar, and then he leaves on bicycle. I go to find him and see coins scattered about, follow trail off same which leads me to him hiding in bushes at a church. Bicycle was leaning up against the bush he was in. Edit, just to clarify because of comments below, I was the police officer that arrested him, not a Red Lobster employee. From the local newspaper. Two young men in a pickup truck on a back road stopped a courting Amish couple in a buggy, and told the couple to give them all of their money. Spoiler, the Amish don't generally have money. They do have good memories, though, and told the cops the license plate number. The inept criminals were locals, too, and should have known better than to try and rob the Amish. If you rob the Amish, brother Ezekiel will cram you into the butter churner and annihilate you. We had an inmate that would constantly call crime stoppers on his contraband cell phone and try to get them to give him the reward if he confessed to his crimes. He did this several times a month. Not a cop myself, but about 10 years ago I got held up and robbed by a group of three guys with knives. All they wanted was the money in my wallet, so me being the smart guy not wanting to mess with knives just obliged. At the end of the ordeal he put the knife to my throat and said, if you ever tell the cops my name is less than redacted greater than I will slice your throat right now. So I went home, called the cops, told them where it happened and gave them the name they guy told me. The name instantly rung a bell with them since the guy had come into contact with the police in the past. Cops went to the spot where I was robbed and they were laying in ambush for a new guy to appear. They could instantly identify the guy he was arrested and that's about it. Happened in the Netherlands, don't know his sentence or anything. How did he not slice your throat then? Couldn't time travel, I dunno. I went to a domestic violence call where the woman claimed her husband hit her. When I asked her how it happened, she told me he couldn't provide the kind of life she wanted him to give her. She stated since he had a heart attack and got lupus he wasn't working so she decided she should start inviting some friends over to have sex with her for money. Mind you, she's telling me, a fully uniformed officer all of this. She says he should act as the person who handles the money for her i.e. her pimp. She then calls someone to come over, and tells her husband that after she gets paid for the sex he should hold the guy at knife point and take the rest of his money. She said he refused to help her with this so they got into an argument. He pushed past her to get out of the apartment. She claimed that was the assault she called me for. I asked her if she understood she just admitted to planning a felony crime. She looked shocked that planning a prostitution and robbery was wrong at all, and did not get why I wasn't arresting her husband for trying to remove himself from her stupid plan to get them both arrested. Edit, thanks for the silver this is my first one. For all of those asking if I arrested her, I did not. The husband is the real hero here. Due to him refusing to be involved in anything this plan of hers never made it off the ground. If the John had actually been invited over I could have arrested her for an offense. 
I did write a report and passed it along to the robbery and vice units, as well as notifying my supervisors. Best I could do that night was separating them. I drive the husband across town to remove him from the situation. The penal code in each state differs slightly on what charges are considered arrestable while still in the planning stages. This wasn't something I could arrest on, mainly due to not having a direct victim I could point to. Basically because this was a, what if, scenario it would be the equivalent of me mumbling to myself I should punch that guy in the face. If the John had been invited over, and or I had gotten a name for the possible John the first could have arrested her for it. TL, doctor, being stupid and making stupid plans isn't a crime. Crimes require victims. She looked shocked that planning a prostitution and robbery was wrong at all. I worked for a road surveying company, years ago. There was one area, that we were covering, that was well known for criminal activity. There were signs posted that literally said, warning, drug dealing and prostitution are illegal, at every intersection. X Leo here. So I get a call a couple years ago to a lady who says she is being threatened. I respond to a very rural area and she shows me her cell phone and it is a chain mail text from an unknown number. The message showed a picture of a girl with a gag in her mouth and she is looking at the camera and holding a sign with both hands that said, help. The text of the message stated she was in Amsterdam and she didn't forward the text to 10 people and, look what happened to her. I explained to the lady that it was a hoax and explained what a chain mail message was. She refused to believe me and became argumentative. When I offered to contact Interpol for her she did not know what that was, that wasn't good enough, and just kept saying that girl needed help. I asked her if she knew the girl and she said no and she believed the girl tried to send her the message using any made up numbers she could instead of contacting anybody she knew. My reasoning was once again shut down, and she said again that the girl needed her help. I remember driving away and the lady screaming at me that I needed to help that girl, I responded with a single, no, over my Pia as I quickly sped away. Both of those women were never heard from again, now forward to 10 people. Not a cop, but worked at a 7-Eleven in a rough part of Chicago. Had two guys come in and ask for two bottles of Grey Goose. I asked for their IDs, they handed them over, and I grabbed the two bottles from behind the counter to ring them up. They proceeded to grab the bottles and book it out of there, leaving their IDs on the counter. I called the police, they came in asking for a description of the thieves and I handed them the IDs. Cops were in disbelief at the stupidity, left and went to the address on one of the IDs that was about two blocks away. About 15 minutes later they walked in with the two guys and bottles of Grey Goose poor guys didn't even have a chance to open them. I confirmed it was them, didn't press charges, took the bottles of Grey Goose back and went on with my overnight shift. Not a cop, but I worked at a 7-Eleven. Close enough. So I'm sitting in the station, doing paperwork. I'm looking out of the window, and a few yards away is a bus stop. A young lad is smashing the glass of the bus stop, as a way of showing off to a couple of girls. So I sigh, walk about 20 yards over to him and arrest him. Another time, a lad had just broken into a pharmacy and stolen some drugs. Sleeping tablets, which he started taking, maybe to hide the evidence, who knows how these people's minds work. There's a foot chase, which gets slower, and slower, and slower. I ended up just walking slowly behind him. The guy fell asleep while I was booking him in. There was a kid who sold drugs on my floor of the college dorm who wasn't the brightest. One night he was driving back to the dorm and a police car comes behind him and turns on their lights. His dumbass stored all of his drugs in his car and assumed they were pulling him over for possession. He proceeds to drive through a red light and pull into the dorm parking lot to hide, mind you, his car was covered in bumper stickers, had a kayak rack, and a vanity plate to top it all off. The parking lot only had one entrance and exit too. Apparently he thought the police car wouldn't go through a red light to follow him. Long story short, they were just going to warn him for having a taillight out and nothing more. Instead, he ended up in the local jail and expelled from the college. The funniest part is that his ledger of all transactions and the dollar amounts, products, and buyers was also right there in his car. He was one stupid criminal. Ex-police officer here. I pulled over a dude for having a brake light out. Nothing serious, ran his plated and the likes. It all came back clean and nothing seemed off, until he exclaimed, I haven't had any alcohol. In an over-enthusiastic tone, for some reason he thought this was a good idea, so nearly got away with it, vodka doesn't smell. 
I breathalyzed him, legal limit in England is 35 he blew over 60. Arrested on the spot and his vehicle towed. Idiot. To clarify, I did not mean that vodka is odorless, what I meant by that comment was that compared to beer or wine or other alcohols, vodka has a very mild smell. Most drink drivers I pulled either smelt of a stronger smelling alcohol or had obvious side effects of the drink making it easy to see they were intoxicated. Hope this clarifies it a bit. Ah, uh, vodka doesn't smell. I beg to differ? As a former bartender, straight vodka doesn't linger. Beer has a bready, yeast smell and is easy to spot hours after you drink. My father is a police officer. He once told me a story of a call he went to for reports of a man and woman fighting in an apartment call came from neighbors for noise complaints, concern. He was third shift, so this was at some point very late at night, when all the crazy people are up and at him. When he arrived he could hear the yelling through the door, he knocked and let them know it was the police. There was immediate silence and a man answered the door, completely naked. The naked man didn't even give my dad a chance to speak or ask questions, the first thing he said was, I don't have a knife behind my back, well, he definitely did have a knife behind his back. And the naked woman he was with had drugs, which was what they were fighting over. They both got arrested that night. Tip, don't do illegal drugs, and if you do, don't answer the door for the cops. Not a cop but I have a short story about my first girlfriend's biological dad who was doing hard time for robing a bank when I met her. According to her he robed the bank in the morning and they didn't have anything in there that he could get and it was in a small town. He didn't wear any type of disguise. After he ran with whatever cash he could grab he decided to go to the police station either later in the day or the next day to act like a witness and say he was one of the customer's witnesses in the bank and to give a statement I guess to get the cops off his trail. When he showed up another hostage victim that happened to be there identified him on the spot and he was promptly arrested. Not the smartest tool in the shed I'm afraid. Not a cop but I used to work at a smoke shop. Three guys broke in through a large window, left blood everywhere just trying to get in. Walked right past the high-end fancy expensive glass and proceeded to grab as many cheap Chinese bongs as possible. They went back through the window breaking two or three bongs in the process of crawling through the tiny hole they made probably cutting themselves even more than they already have and hightailed it across the street. They seemed to have dropped damn near everything while running because there was literally a trail of broken glass leading to the apartment across the street. Cops came, followed the glass trail leading directly to someone's door. Looked over the little fence to their bottom floor balcony and saw three guys all cut up smoking from a broken bong. We estimated they took eight or nine bongs, they were smoking from the only survivor. They turned out to be regulars. Never seem them again after that. So I get a call of a beer run, shoplifting, from the local CVS. I check the area and see two guys matching the description. I detain them and sure enough they had a couple Coronas and some off-brand whiskey. I confirm with CVS they were the suspects, the alcohol was their property, and they are desirous of prosecution. All is good, my state requires I take them to the station to book into jail and get fingerprinted, then they are issued a citation and released with a court date a couple months out. While driving to the station I ask what they were doing stealing the alcohol. One guy says that they are only 20 and since they weren't old enough to buy it, they just decided to steal it instead. No big deal, young people make stupid mistakes. I get to the jail, book them in and start filling out the citation. The citation requires both birth date and age. I do the math on the birthday, and sure enough the guy is 21. Meaning he is old enough to buy alcohol. I go back into the jail and verify his birthday. Yup, same one he had listed on his driver's license. I redo the math out loud. 21 years old. I ask, how old are you again? He replies, 20 sir. I said, you turned 21 last month, again he is adamant, no I turned 20. I just left it at that. TLDR, guy stole beer because he forgot his age and thought he wasn't old enough to buy it. Went to jail because of it. I knew this kid in high school who got pulled over for a minor traffic violation. He decides it would be funny to jump out of the car and book it down the street. The cops of course go chasing after him and after a couple of blocks he stops, puts his hands in the air, and yells, psych, the cops didn't find it funny so they tackled him to ground and put him under arrest. His parents were wealthy so he didn't get in that much trouble, but it was still so incredibly stupid. My dad is a cop and he was interrogating a robber which was denying he had any involvement since the start. 
Dad, the man told us that you robbed him of $500. Robber, no it was only $300. He basically gave himself away. Not a cop, but, my ex-brother-in-law. He was never very bright. But, he decided to rob a petrol station, gas station. Goes in carrying a knife. Walking right past some customers' vehicles. Including one with a big blue light on and words police plastered all over it and the two big guys in black uniforms in there.